Hello, everybody. I'm Kevin Keller with CFP Board. Thank you for joining us today. On the line with us is Bob Glovsky, Chair of the Board of CFP Board, and Tom Crowder, Managing Director of Marketing and Business Development here for us at CFP Board. This is uh, the 13th program we've done like this. The first 12 were on the road, Bob and Tom and I visited 12 different cities over the last two weeks. And uh, for those of you who couldn't come out in person, we're pleased that you could join us online in this virtual certificate connection today. We want to update you on a number of areas of interest, including the potential of a national public awareness campaign. We'll also provide for you an update on public policy and communications. And we will want your input uh, and have made time at the end of this presentation to answer questions or take comments. Uh, we originally promoted this as 90 minutes. We should be done in about 60 minutes, maybe just a little bit longer. But if there are questions that we cannot get to uh, during the course of uh, this event, then uh, we will be sure to post the answers in written form online at cfp.net. So at this point, I will turn the program over to Bob Glovsky uh, for an update on some of the activities at CFP Board. Thanks, Kevin, and thanks, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, it's, uh, it's, del I'm a del it's delightful to um, connect with as many certificates as we possibly can. It's also important for us to do that. And so from my standpoint, um, I'm glad that so many people are tuning in to listen to this. Let me start by just giving you a little bit of background on some of the things that we've been doing over the last year, and um, some of which you've been, you've been reading about and hearing about. So uh, it may not be a surprise to you, but hopefully these are things that, that uh, you'll be interested in hearing about. And the first area really ha has to do with our advocacy program and the things that we've been doing in Washington with CFP Board and with the government. And <clears throat> specifically, um, as you may recall, we have proposed a National Oversight Board. We've done this in conjunction with the Financial Planning Coalition, our friends at uh, FPA and NAPFA. And together, we proposed a National Oversight Board for anybody who called themselves a financial planner, where this board would create competency levels and ethical standards, including a fiduciary standard of care. And we've been, uh, we, we think we got a, a, lot, a long way towards that goal in that uh, the, the Dodd-Frank bill has a provision in it for a study by the GAO to really look at the gaps in the regulatory structure as it affects financial planners. The GAO has to report back to the um, House Financial Services Committee, the Senate Banking Committee, and the Senate Special Committee on Aging, which is keenly uh, interested in the issues that affect the elderly. And those three um, committees are going to hear from the GAO and the study. And from what we can see so far, the GAO has been very thorough in its work and will come back in, um, in January to those committees with its report. Uh, after that, we're not sure what will happen. We're hoping that there will be hearings held. But of course, we've got an election between now and then, and uh, we're watching it very closely. The second area that is getting more uh, publicity is the advocacy um, issue of financial on the um, uh, fiduciary standards. And this is something, as again, you know, we've been knee deep in with the Financial Planning Coalition, with, uh, with um, uh, both the, the, um, uh, the NAPFA and FPA, but also with, the, uh, with groups like the Consumer Federation of America and Barb Roper, uh, with AARP and their leadership with Fund Democracy uh, and uh, the IAA. And we're all very much out in front on the fact that there really needs to be a fiduciary standard for anyone who um, is doing retail investment advice. It seems like with the latest um, uh, testimony, what the, the uh, feedback that the SEC has gotten, and also from what we're hearing from Mary Shapiro herself, chair of the SEC, uh, that it looks like they are moving forward in this direction. And I think we'd all be somewhat surprised if there wasn't a fiduciary standard of care across the board. Now, what that'll take, uh, what form that'll take, and she has said publicly she thinks it ought to be equal to what the RIAs have today, the, the 40 Act standard, or something stronger. So we're optimistic there. We're watching it, obviously, very closely. And the group that's supporting this is much broader uh, than our coalition. And uh, uh, we think it's we think it's uh, we we think and, and hope that it's going to happen. 
And so if you want to learn more about what we're doing with the Financial Planning Coalition, um, we urge you to go to financialplanningcoalition.com. You can see the uh, website at the bottom of this slide and learn more about what we're doing. So another area that we've been very active in, uh, in the advocacy front, is with our consumer advocate, Eleanor Blaney. Uh, I think many of you may know Eleanor. Uh, she really is an expert in this, and she has done a lot of great things over the past year uh, to help with, con with consumer awareness as our consumer advocate. Uh, for our 25th anniversary, we started 25 tips over 25 weeks, lifelong financial strategies. This is getting a lot of uh, press, a lot of uh, coverage. Uh, and we've broken it down into different age groups, the, um, the young, uh, the uh, uh, middle-aged, the baby boomers, the retirees. The, the next area we just released two weeks ago was the Consumer Guide for Financial Self-Defense. Uh, there has been a lot of uh, media attention to this. It's really a, a, a textbook, if you will, a pamphlet, but it's really like a textbook of, of what you can do, what the consumer can do to make sure that they um, are, uh, are, are prudent in what they do and, and who advises them. And there are lots of different tips in there, uh, as well as real-life examples. When we went out to our certificate community uh, a while back and we asked for real-life stories, we were inundated with hundreds of stories of abuse, and uh, a lot of those have found their way into the guide, the consumer guide. This is something we're doing in conjunction with the government, the General Services Administration, and uh, they are um, actually pub uh, distributing this through their uh, publication website and uh, distribution channel, uh, and that's going to be in their uh, November catalog for people. So that's, that's another thing we've done. And then the last item that I wanted to mention here was the ambassadors program. We're broadening our voice. We, are, we have gotten people uh, certificates in parts of the country, uh, in, in major urban areas, to act as our ambassadors. Uh, to help broaden our voice in the community. A big part of what, what we've been trying to do is to see that CFP board and, and the work that CFP board is doing gets noticed, and gets noticed not just by our certificates, but by the public in general, uh, as well as the media and the, and the policymakers. So our ambassadors program is working in that front. The other thing that I'd like to talk about is financial planning days. This is coming up. Uh, in, in October, we're, hit, we're hitting 20 cities during the month of October, uh, most of the major cities. And this, this is a, uh, a project that we've done in conjunction with the Foundation for Financial Planning, with the Financial Planning Association, and with the Conference of Mayors, National Conference of Mayors. And the mayors are the ones that are really bringing this to all the cities and helping us, uh, both from a publicity standpoint and also from a, an accessibility standpoint. It'll be one-on-one -on -one advice classroom-style workshops. Uh, we are targeting clearly the underserved population that perhaps practitioners as general rule don't target. And uh, we are looking for volunteers in the different cities to help out as, as advisors. I, I would say to you that we've started, we were, we've been doing financial planning clinics at the CFP board now for the last five or so years. And by doing them, we've been doing one or two a year, sometimes three a year. This gives us a chance to do 20 all at once. Uh, and, and by partnering with the Conference for Mayors has been a, a, a huge um, step in the right direction for us. We've also done financial planning clinics at AARP's national con conference the last two years. So we've, we've, we think we've figured out how to do this reasonably well, and now we're trying to get it out there to more and more people. So if you'd like to learn more about this or become involved, uh, go to www.financialplanningdays.org. And speaking of involved, CFP Board is always looking for volunteers. Uh, I should tell you that I started back in 1988 as a volunteer on uh, what was at that time the, the uh, predecessor for the Council on Examinations. It was the Board of Examiners. We were the group that uh, created, uh, had, to, had to structure and then create the comprehensive exam. So for anybody listening who has taken the comprehensive exam, yeah, it was us. We, we built it. And um, it was great work. And that's how I got involved. And here I am um, 22 years later as uh, chair of the board. I think that there's a lot of stories like mine, I'm not unique, of people who started as a volunteer and uh, found that they had a passion for this, they really enjoyed it, and over time did more and more volunteer work. We have several councils and commissions you can get involved in. We have several areas on the exam, uh, whether it's item writing or 
or a cut score where people get, can get involved. And so I would urge anybody who's interested to go to cfp.net slash volunteers. Look at the different opportunities uh, and volunteer. Uh, it's a great way to do as, as little or as much as you want to do and to become involved in what we're doing for the 62,000 certificates and the people in the future who are going to be certificates. So with that, let me turn it over to Kevin, who's going to talk um, about um, our uh, public awareness campaign. Thanks, Bob. And just, I guess, one final follow-up on volunteers. Uh, since I came to CFP Board in 2007, we've more than doubled the number of volunteers who are uh, participating with CFP Board. I feel very fortunate to be working uh, for an organization that has such a committed and passionate uh, group of individuals willing to volunteer time away from their business and their family for the benefit of the organization. It's a real resource, and it's one that uh, we're trying to uh, uh, leverage for the good of the profession. Let's focus now on public awareness. You may ask uh, uh, why the focus on, on public awareness. First of all, it's in our mission. CFP Board's mission is to benefit the public by granting the certification and upholding it as the recognized symbol of excellence for personal financial planning. Over the last 25 years, we've had year-over-year -year growth every year. We're almost at 62,000 people who are active CFP professionals. We've been doing a good job at the granting portion of our mission, but it's the upholding it as the recognized symbol of excellence that I think we have a ways to go. I've been out on the road last year with Marilyn Demitroff, and this year Bob and I have been on the road. We've been in almost uh, three dozen cities to date. And uh, at Certificate Connections, the need for public awareness comes up every single time. And so we've been listening to you and hearing from you about how uh, important CFP certification is to you, to your, um, to your uh, personal and professional growth. But ultimately, we, we frequently hear you, we, uh, certificates tell us we just wish that more of our prospective clients uh, understood uh, CFP certification and its value. Our certificate surveys also uh, tell us that it's needed when we ask more formally. In a recent online uh, uh, web-based survey that went out to all certificates earlier this summer, 94% of you say that a public awareness campaign is needed. Over 7,000 people uh, responded to that survey. It was a 12% response rate. And again, 94% say it's needed. In our year-over-year -year longitudinal studies, when we survey certificates and ask what's important to them, 97%, almost year-over-year, uh, -year, the same number, 97% of you tell us that uh, brand building is important for CFP board to undertake. However, However, only 30% of you in those surveys have told us that we're doing a good job. So the gap between importance and how well we're doing is large. In fact, it's larger on brand building than any other activity that we do at CFP Board. Public awareness is also important uh, uh, for uh, uh, other reasons. Five, uh, many consumers are not in the game. From our focus groups, we know that uh, consumers do not know who to trust. The selection process uh, from our research when a potential client is selecting an advisor or planner is not very thorough, and there is a lack of understanding about CFP certification. So the, the public awareness, there is a lack of public awareness. And to that end, after listening to certificates, after talking about this uh, at uh, uh, a number of board meetings, we've taken a number of steps to uh, begin to address this issue. First of all, we've strengthened our marketing department. Shortly, Tom Crowder, who is our new managing director of marketing and business development, uh, will join us. Tom joined our staff initially as a consultant back in February and March to help us conduct an agency search to assist us in the preparation of a plan that the board will consider uh, later this year. And uh, after having participated in the agency search, 
uh, put his hand up and said, I'd like to be considered for the job. Uh, Tom comes to CFP Board as a seasoned advertising and marketing executive, most recently having worked uh, 12 years at Verizon, where he was responsible for Verizon's advertising and marketing function, a staff of 80 and a, and a couple hundred million dollar budget. Clearly, we're not talking about this here, but we feel honored to have Tom with us, and, and already he's making an impact. Uh, we have selected an agency, I alluded to that earlier, and that agency is working with us to help us evaluate the potential and possibility of a national public awareness campaign. And as a part of that work, we have conducted a, 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 a lot of research. First on the qualitative side, you would know that primarily as focus groups. We've conducted focus groups of uh, consumers who are using a CFP professional. We've conducted focus groups of people who are not using a CFP professional but uh, have an advisor relationship. Uh, we've conducted focus groups of the do-it-yourselfers, and uh, that's an interesting group to say the least. We then went out into the field to validate uh, the initial findings from our focus group with a very detailed quantitative research study We'll share with you a little bit more uh, about that. But at this point, what I'd like to do is introduce you to Tom Crowder, the newest uh, member of CFP Board's executive leadership team. Thanks, Kevin. Um, as Kevin mentioned, we conducted a formal agency search to find a partner that could help us with our marketing and advertising branding efforts. And uh, we selected Arnold Worldwide. And we selected them based on a number of criteria. We started out with a list of agencies within a geographic range to be able to service our Washington, D.C. office. Of about 15 to 20 agencies, we narrowed that down. Uh, we asked for questionnaires, narrowed it down further, and saw four presentations in, per in person. We selected Arnold Worldwide because of their, um, their experience, their comprehensive approach, uh, their creative strength, their media clout, their media buying arm is one of the largest in, in the world, and their overall strategic abilities. And you may not be familiar with Arnold, it is an advertising company, but you are familiar with some of their clients. Uh, you're probably familiar with the Fidelity campaign and the Green Line. They also have the McDonald's account. Uh, you may be familiar with Flo, the progressive insurance uh, agent that's on TV, and here in the Washington area they handle Amtrak, PBS, and USA Today, among other clients. So let's talk a little bit more about the research that Kevin mentioned. In the focus groups, um, it was very interesting, and really this kind of, this slide really sums up what we learned in our consumer focus groups, is when we started out the focus groups, we asked people about their impressions of a financial planner. So when you think of a financial planner, what comes to mind? And it was pretty... It wasn't very flattering, was it, Tom? Not very flattering. So they would throw out things like, this is a slick Wall Street type. He's a salesperson. I don't trust him. I feel uncomfortable around him. I don't want to share my personal information with him. Uh, he's making a commission that, that I'm not aware of. Uh, all very negative perceptions. But then during the course of the focus group, which lasts for about an hour and a half or so, we talked about what goes into um, getting certified or being a certified financial planner professional. And after people knew about the requirements um, and more about the certification, a very different picture emerged. So at the end of the groups, we asked them, so can you tell us what comes to mind when you think about a certified financial planner now? And I've worked in a lot of different categories from you know, financial to furniture to telecom to computers, a lot of different clients and products, and I've rarely seen such a dramatic shift in such a short amount of time. And at the end of the group, people were much, um, they were likely to say things like, well, a certified financial planner, that would be somebody, that would be a guide, a partner, somebody I can trust, um, someone that can give me good financial advice, um, someone I can share all my information with and feel comfortable so there was a really big shift, and it's really just uh, in done learning about certification. So the key takeaway here is that CFP certification makes a big difference to consumers once they know about it, and what we need to do is, um, is help them know about it. So one of the key things we need to determine is who is our target. <clears throat> this is really a strategic decision for us, 
and you know to make the most out of our marketing funds we need to reach only those people that are most likely to seek out and use a certified financial planner so on this slide you can see the total US population as the the largest oval here that's the population 18 plus so adults 18 plus is about 20, 223 million consumers but we want to target further so within that we'll be looking at targeting mass affluent consumers those are consumers with investable assets of 100,000 plus. That's about 12% of the U.S. adult population. So you may ask why why consumers with investable assets of 100,000 plus? And the reason is, is really a couple fold, but mainly it's based on research from certificates. Uh, in our research uh, from certificates, we found that the median level of investable assets for the average client of a CFP professional is 500,000. They're also media reasons or targeting reasons for reaching consumers of 100,000 to a million in investable assets. If we were to target consumers with a million plus in investable assets, it's a very unique group. It's a very expensive group to reach, and they have very unique media habits. So the media that we would use to target those individuals would not necessarily be seen by people with 100,000 to a million in investable assets, whereas the flip side is true. If we target those with 100,000 to a million in investable assets, those media types um, are consumed by those with a million plus, so they will get the bleed over and see the messages that we would target to the 100 to a million uh, customer. So within that, how might we target further? And we would target using a segment identified as the Mass Affluent Validator segment by Simmons, which is a major syndicated research company. That's about 9% of the U.S. population. It'll be even less when you consider that we would be buying an age demographic of 35 to 64, and that would take us down to about 6% of the U.S. 18-plus uh, population. But let me say that uh, very definitively, the Mass Affluent Validator segment is about way more than demographics. It's about a mindset. And I think this is key for you to know as you promote your businesses as well. But in our research, um, we found that the likelihood of someone would want to work with a financial planner, a certified financial planner, it did not vary with age, asset level, or gender. But it did, it was influenced very much by mindset, and specifically the kind of mindset that the Mass Affluent Validator segment has. And let me tell you a little bit more about that. Simmons does an enormous amount of research with consumers, and they are able to group and segment consumers into different segments, this being one of the segments. Um, and they know from their many, many questions that they ask um, what a definable uh, segment is, and they also do a lot of research to see what kind of media this segment consumes. So just a little bit about who they are mindset-wise, and there are many, many things that go into this, but I'll just give you a couple of examples. Um, the mass affluent validator consumer um, tends to be very optimistic. Um, they would agree with a statement that says uh, you should seize opportunities in life, as an example. Um, they're very responsible. They think financial security for retirement is the individual's responsibility versus the government's responsibility. Uh, they're confident and collaborative, so they prefer to work as part of a team, which makes sense when you think um, that they would be more apt to seek out a, a financial planner but versus do it themselves. Um, they're very much information seekers, so they would like to know as much as possible before they're committing to something. And just as one other example, they're, they're very practical, but they really appreciate quality, so they enjoy, enjoy owning uh, good quality things. So, the beauty of being able to target the mass fluent validator segment is we will be able to choose media vehicles that this mindset watches or views. Um, so we'll be able to select one media vehicle over another seemingly similar vehicle that attracts similar demographics but may be very different in terms of the mindset of the person watching it. So it could be one TV program over another, one magazine over another um, based on the mindset. Even if those vehicles have the same, uh, ostensibly the same demographics. Yeah, they're attracting the same demographics, yeah. So now let's think about what would you want to say uh, to that target. And here the message is very clear from our research. We did a consumer quantitative study um, within the 90 plus uh, confidence level. It included multivariate analysis. That means that we were not only looking at the appeal of individual benefits or criteria, 
but it, we could look at combinations of messages and to see which provided the greatest shift in consumer perceptions and, and the greatest shift toward likelihood to actually seek out a CFP professional. So the good news is in the research the findings are very clear uh, and they make a lot of sense, especially when you consider that the research identified one of the key barriers to using a financial planning professional uh, is trust or lack of trust. So to combat the trust issue, what we need to communicate at a high level is that a certified financial planner professional focuses on comprehensive planning that's in your best interest. And beyond that, in terms of the combination of messages that will give us the biggest bang for the buck, uh, we get the maximum shift in consumer perception when we highlight the CFP professional's focus on planning and ethics. So on the planning side, although many CFP professionals, of course, can and do sell financial and insurance products, they're really committed and passionate about the planning process, and they disclose what's in it for them when they do sell products. Um, and that's really the focus on planning that we need to have in our creative. Um, on ethics, uh, the fiduciary or client first standard is the ethical principle that changes consumer perceptions most. And that's really the focus on ethics that we need to have in our, in our creative. So all the other aspects of certification are also very important, education, experience, um, enforcement, but they won't get us as far as concentrating on this specific combination of messages um, which came out of our quantitative research. And, and Tom, if you would, would you just talk a moment, because we, we sat in focus groups, we watched uh, the, the focus group moderator ask about exam and education and experience. When I've been out on the road, I've asked certificates if we were going to promote CFP certification what do you think is most important? It's really kind of all over the place. So this research was really uh, will, is, is very helpful because there really wasn't uh, a consensus coming out of the uh, focus groups. Is that right? Yeah, yeah and the qualitative, which is done with not enough people to project it to the entire consumer universe, um, people did have different perceptions on what was most appealing. But um, we did do a very robust uh, quantitative study, and it, it did allow us to very clearly see what the most uh, the, the, I guess the message with the most potential for changing consumers, consumer attitudes would be. Well, great. Uh, if, if you were sitting there listening so far, you might be asking, what are we doing at CFP Board to drive awareness now? <clears throat> and uh, I would tell you that we have a very aggressive media relations program uh, underway. Uh, Bob Glupski, who's on the line with us today, he and I were in New York uh, late last month uh, talking with the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, actually the Wall Street Journal on several different occasions, talking with Smart Money and others. And uh, that's what we would call the earned media. And we've been working that the, the program with Eleanor Blaney and our consumer advocate, uh, the work that we're doing with Financial Planning Days is all about driving awareness of CFP uh, certification. And we've been having some success as well. We've had uh, over 16 million impressions for our 25 tips for 25 weeks for our 25th anniversary alone, and we're only 10 weeks into it. So we've been having a uh, great uh, pickup uh, on that. We've also, uh, uh, we track our, uh, the value of the media that we earned since August 1st. We've had over 121 million impressions total for CFP board and our media metrics analysis tells us that if we had to buy that just for the last three months alone, that would uh, would be a, a value of over $5 million. So we've been doing uh, uh, a, a very aggressive uh, campaign, but of course none of this is paid media. But CFP professionals uh, tell us that, that they want more. Our current fees, uh, the current fees for recertification and as a part of our budget fund, our non paid media or the earned media, the public, uh, the public relations, if you were. As we've uh, looked at this, uh, it's clear that moving to the next level will require uh, a larger budget. As uh, uh, we've talked to CFP certificates, they've told us in our telephone surveys, and, and we've reached out in a very detailed phone conversation uh, with CFP certificates to over a couple hundred certificates. They st they tell us that yes, they uh, certificates tell us they want more, and 
83% uh, of CFP professionals uh, still supported a public awareness campaign knowing that it might result or that it would result in a, a higher renewal recertification fees. You might be asking, well, what does this all mean in dollars and cents? Uh, right now, you currently pay $360 in fees every two years or uh, $180 a year. The last fee increase we had was in 2005, and before that it was in 1998. Our telephone survey to the 200, in-depth uh, survey to 200 certificates used two methodologies to, ter to determine what additional fee CFP professionals considered the best value for their money in terms of a public awareness campaign. Now keep in mind that zero was one of the options. Uh, our research showed that the majority of CFP professionals were willing to pay an extra $12 a month to fund a public awareness campaign. Um, so if you're currently at $180 a year, an extra $12 a month or $145 uh, would take uh, the CFP recertification or renewal fee, annual fee, to uh, $325. We also ask what frequency uh, you would uh, prefer to be uh, invoiced for the certification, and while we've been uh, re uh, invoicing people every two years, uh, it, it was very clear that certificates preferred uh, annual billing. One of the questions that has come up from time to time, if you were to go to uh, annual fee payment, does that mean that we would have to report CE annually? And the answer is no, as, we, as we've looked at this. So the question here today is, uh, is about awareness. It is, is it worth um, uh, additional money to uh, drive awareness of CFP certification? That's a question that uh, the uh, Board of Directors will be evaluating. They will um, uh, consider this. And Bob, if I might call on you to just to kind of walk through where the Board is in its decision process and what some of the things they'll be considering as, uh, as we go to the next step. I'd be, I'd be happy to, and, and then we can go to, directly to questions. The board meets uh, November 10th to the 12th, and at that point, this is on the agenda, and the board will discuss it. There'll be a presentation from Arnold and Company and from Tom and his people as to uh, what the campaign would look like if we were to do it. And then the board has to vote on whether or not they think this is viable and makes sense. And part of what we've been doing with these certificate connections over the last several weeks and with this virtual uh, connection with all of you is to get your temperature and your feedback. Um, do you think this makes sense? Are we on the right track? Is this something that you're willing to support? We look at it uh, a little bit as if we have $145 from 62,000 certificates, we can do something with that. For each certificate to have $145 on their own to spend, how much can they do with that as an individual? So that's how we've been looking at this. We, there, we believe there's been a demand for raising awareness, and now we're looking at how do we do that in, in a cost-effective way. Uh, the other point I'd like to make that is part of the, uh, the, the plan, if, if it is accepted by the board, would be that we would find tools and resources for all, all individual certificates to use on their local level that would tie into any kind of national campaign so that there would be some functionality and some leverage for each of you and what you may do on a day-to-day -day basis if you wanted to. So on that note, um, I will tell you that, again, you'll hear more from the board after the meeting um, in November, but beforehand we wanted to get everybody's input. So I think this is probably a good time to open it up to discussion and questions, unless, Kevin or Tom, you have anything else you want to add. Bob, I uh, will be uh, uh, moderating the questions here. They come in to uh, they come in from here. So why don't we just take a look at what has come in? Um, uh, the first question uh, comes in: uh, How we plan to communicate the CFP brand? Will it be used as an adjective or noun? Uh, and uh, I think it's that traditional question that we've always uh, that I hear out. <coughs> excuse me on the. Uh, out in the field regarding uh, the proper use of the uh, CFP uh, certification and CFP designation. So, Tom, I'll let you take that as it relates to 
how we'll communicate uh, the CFP certification in our advertising. Yeah, we would uh, treat it as we have been, which is um, as an adjective, um, just in order to protect our trademark status, and that's very important for us. And, and so uh, there, the commenter made the, made the comment about um, they, uh, they had noticed that we might not have used it completely correctly every time, but uh, we work very hard on that, obviously, here at CFP Board, and uh, uh, we appreciate you uh, following there. Uh, there was a question, will the slides be available after the call? And they will. Nick, when will we have those posted by? Um, the middle of next week. We have this posted. The presentation and slides will be posted. The, um, there's a question about uh, how will you fund the campaign, and that came in before we walked through the last slide. But uh, we have had preliminary conversations with uh, our Finance and Investment Committee and at the board level as well uh, about uh, the initial funding for this, and, and the organization is uh, looking at <coughs> Uh, funding the initial startup costs and, and a good portion of year number one out of reserves. And uh, if, if we were to move forward, again, to be determined, but if the board were to vote affirmatively to move forward, we are looking at a startup date approximately the end of the first or the beginning of the second quarter of 2011. And uh, with uh, uh, any potential fee increase, most likely to follow at some point after that later in year number one. Bob, do you have anything else to add to that? No, I think that that's, that's well put. And, and if you, uh, I'm sure uh, many of you are sitting there doing the math. And when you do the math for 62,000 certificates at $145, it comes out to about $9 million a year. One of the questions and one of the concerns that the board had is, is this a reasonable amount of money to be effective? And that was one of the questions that we put early on to Arnold. So one of the things that we tried to do in doing our homework before coming to our to the board is what's a reasonable what do our certificates feel is a reasonable amount uh, to add? And Kevin talked about that before, and that's where the twelve dollars a month came from. And um, is it effective? Because um, we all know, you know, we're not Fidelity, we're not McDonald's, we don't have two hundred million dollars to spend on it, and that's why we have to be targeted and segmented in where we're going and smart about the dollars that we spend. And at the same time, those dollars have to be reasonable and effective. So that's uh, something that the board will be weighing. Uh, one, the feedback from all of you as to what you think is reasonable on your part. And then two, collectively, will that amount of money, even with seed money from the, from the reserves, will that be effective? Bob, if you, uh, if you might uh, talk a moment about the board's concern and uh, uh, very real interest in how we measure this and what, uh, what you've asked of, uh, of the staff. Yeah, thanks, Kevin. That's it's a good question. It, it's important to the board that whatever work is done uh, by Kevin and his group, that, that it be measured that we measure the effectiveness, whether it's the advocacy campaign, the education, the examination, whatever it may be that we're doing, everything's got to be measurable in one way or another. And this is no different. So uh, we need to be able to have a baseline as to what consumer awareness is today, uh, much of that data we, we now have, and then be able to measure it a, a year from now uh, to say, is it effective? Are we making inroads? Are, are we uh, raising consumer awareness? Because that's just the first piece. Once we raise consumer awareness, then we have to drive them uh, to, uh, to CFP certificates. So the first piece is the awareness piece. And it's got to be measured, because if it doesn't work, we're not, we don't want to keep coming back to certificates and ask for more money if it doesn't work. So it's got to be measurable. And one of the reasons that we like Arnold and we selected Arnold is because they're very big on measuring results. And it's very important. It's part of their culture. And it's obviously part of our culture. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, uh, Tom, if you would speak to what the measurements will actually be and uh, kind of the frequency, not only for the bigger pieces, but how we'll measure periodically and incrementally. Yeah, there'll be a couple of um, measurements that we'll be looking at very carefully. Some would be related to awareness, preference, and intent to use a CFP professional. Those would be measured on a periodic basis uh, where we would do a quantitative consumer study to see what the awareness, preference, and intent to use a CFP professional was before the campaign, and then at different points, probably on an annual basis. But within um, 
the first year and ongoing years, we will have a number of efforts that will be more direct response in nature. So we will be measuring um, cost per response metrics, uh, engagement on web pages, things like that, that will allow us um, some pretty specific measures in the interim. Great. Well, I'm gonna, we've got a number of questions here, so we'll try to get to as many of them as quickly as we can. We have, uh, somebody says we have uh, several education programs in their area. How will these changes impact candidates, not yet uh, certificates? No real impact. I mean, the process to become a certificate will remain the same. Um, uh, Tom, a question, how much will the $9 million buy, uh, how much, you know, how will, it's, I, I think a question more generally about uh, the kind of the media mix and how that, those decisions will be made. Yeah, we've just recently finished our uh, quantitative study. So right now we're entering the phase of planning. That would include media planning. One of the biggest parts of that is going to be uh, choosing what our media outlets would be. So. We have not gotten or finished the media planning uh, right now, but we're looking very carefully on what media types and within those media types, which vehicles we would use for the media plan. Uh, have a question. And, and I think, and I think uh, Kevin, uh, it might be it might be valuable for Tom to just explain a little bit about um, the the possible media types. I think you know we're all used to as consumers watching TV and seeing the the ads, but but it's much broader than that these days. Sure. There's, of course, the, the basics that Bob mentioned, there are TV, radio, print, newspaper, out of home. But there, there are many, many new avenues that we're looking at as well, much in the online digital space, uh, not only just banners and uh, rich media, but also partnerships, social media, and other engagement tactics that uh, might be part of the mix. A uh, couple questions here. Uh, uh, providing materials for CFPs locally would be included in the nine million or would there be separate fees for those uh, marketing pieces and we see being able to giving to give you the tools and resources that you could use is that right both digitally and and how would that work Tom? Well, I think our thought is to um, make those available on the website where you could uh, pull down uh, those materials uh, for different types of media that you might use as well it could be print could be online uh, a person here comments that the CFP brand primarily re relies upon skilled certificates. Please keep selection and enforcement efforts a top priority. And uh, there, uh, at least from uh, the board of directors, or at least here at the staff level, our enforcement function is is indeed a, is a, is a high priority. And certainly, the upholding the standards that it takes to become certified. Not only are we maintaining those, but they have, uh, you know, they have increased the addition of the capstone course. Bob, any other thoughts you have about uh, maintaining and increasing the standards to become certified? Uh, no, I think that you know the the we're very proud of where the standards are today. We're very proud of the fact that that we have a fiduciary standard of care that was in there before the SEC and the government started talking about it. We're very proud of our education and our exam. So, uh, no, I think that with the addition of the financial plan uh, preparation and presentation and the requirement that education programs have to do capstone courses now, um, I, no, I think we're very happy with where the standards are now. We always look at them. We always want, to, want them to be better, uh, stronger, and, and uh, closer to perfection, and we'll continue to do that. But I think right now the standards um, are high, and that, that will not change. Well, and when I'm out on in the field, Bob, and you've seen this too, everybody who's already certified wants them to be harder, and people who haven't yet been certified want them to be less. <laughs> right. Well, I think, uh, I think then we've got, we've got a good balance. Indeed. Uh, I'm in a relatively rural area, writes one person. How will the campaign help me? Won't most of the beneficiaries be certificates in urban areas? Tom? I think the, uh, a lot of the media that we would choose, be it print or broadcast or online, would be available nationally so that folks in rural areas would be seeing those messages. Uh, so a person asks us, but forgive me, I'm just reading the questions come in. A person asks us, what is the importance of the new consumer protection emphasis to the profession? Bob, why don't I start and then I'll, I'll, I'll turn that over to you. We have always uh, we, we speak in terms of, uh, of benefiting the, the consumer or benefiting the public, 
And uh, at least from my perspective at the staff and as we uh, execute the board's mission and vision, we look at the certificate community as being very important to benefiting the public because if it were not for all of you uh, providing competent and ethical financial planning, uh, it, it, there, there would be no benefit to the public. So it's, it's not a matter, of, sometimes the question comes up, uh, you know, you, uh, about uh, protecting the public. I think we see it much more as benefiting. Do you have anything to add, Bob? No, I would agree with that. I mean, to us it isn't about, there, there's an element of protecting the public, which is why we're in, in, uh, involved in the fiduciary standard and the uh, GAO study, but it really is how do you benefit the public. And part of benefiting the public is protecting them. Clearly, but but it's broader than that. It, it really is um, ways to benefit the public. And and when I mentioned earlier the the uh, financial planning days, part of that is to benefit the public, uh, many of whom have not um, uh, felt that they could hire, afford to hire a certified financial planner professional. Bob, this next question is for you. Fast forward a few years, uh, if uh, the program's not working. Uh, for the campaign, would the board consider decreasing our fees in the future? Um, you know, my 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 simple and easy answer is yes, absolutely. Um, that uh, this is intended to be dedicated to the uh, public awareness campaign. If the public awareness campaign isn't working, we have to come back to the certificates, tell them the results that it's working or not working and um, justify why we would want to use the money for something else if that were the case. Now, I, with that said, I will tell you that this is my uh, last, my sixth and last year on the board and my last year as chair. So I will not be on the board three years from now, but that certainly is, is, um, is my intent and my statement and what I've said to the board and what I've, and what I've said and the board has said to Kevin. Yeah, we've been very clear. Uh, one of the, I think one of the, uh, one of the, uh, important components of this as we contemplated at the staff level is to be very transparent with uh, the certificates about uh, you know what the media schedule is where they can see if they, if there are TV ads and we're looking like there you know that that will be part of the media mix when they're going to run the kinds of uh, uh, the ads where they're going to be and and the cost so the, the concept and I have a related question how can we be sure these dollars won't be shifted to other programs. The, the additional dollars are uh, designed and will be, uh, would be levied only for the direct costs associated with the public awareness campaign. Yeah, I, and I would echo that. It, this is, um, uh, we have tried very hard over the last few years to be open and transparent with all the certificates and other stakeholders as to what we're doing. Uh, it, you, you may uh, periodically say I get too many emails from you guys, but to, uh, from our standpoint, it's communicating out all the different things that we are working on, all the different things that we're doing, and also uh, we've we've been aggressively surveying certificates to find out what they think and what they want. And this is this public awareness campaign is an outgrowth of hearing from certificates that this is what they want. So we're not doing this in a vacuum, and a big part of what we've tried to do is to be, as Kevin said, transparent. That will not change. Uh, and and uh, you know, my my question to um, the certificates, whenever we have a certificate connection, is uh, to please judge us on how we're doing the last few years, because I think that it's it's a it's been a sea change. It's really been a reinvention of the CFP board since we moved to DC and started embarking aggressively on things like advocacy and now public awareness. Uh, um, so, uh, you know, have we been transparent in doing this? Have we been um, communicating to you all the different things we've done and why we've done them, what we've started to undertake? I, we were very clear a few years ago when we hired Kevin that the first step was going to be moving to D.C. We were very clear about that with the certificates, why we thought we ought to be in D.C. You know, to me, as a member of the board back then and now as chair, that's been a home run. Uh, there's, and I don't, and we haven't heard anybody say that they didn't think that was a great thing. So, uh, when you look at the public awareness campaign, to, to um, uh, piggyback on Kevin, transparency is critical to us that that all of the certificates know what's going on and feel part of this process, and that we have tools that will help you in your individual businesses. And so, if you don't feel like we're being transparent, let us know because we, we like to think that we are communicating, and uh, in my mind, I don't think we can over-communicate with certificates. 
Uh, next question, Bob, is also for you. I'll let you take this. How will you position CFP compared to other industry organizations? And, and the, the writer references some work that FPA is doing now to uh, promote awareness of FPA. Yeah, and, and um, I should say that we can say we are very close with FPA. Um, I don't think that the two organizations have ever been closer than they are right now. The, um, uh, Kevin and I actually are speaking at the FPA uh, conference um, uh, later this week. Um, it's, it's a, and, and the coalition has been going on now for almost two years with the FPA, CFP board, and NAPFA. We've been working very closely together. Uh, Tom Potts, who is the president of FPA right now, is a former chair of the CFP board. So the, the organizations um, uh, meet together regularly, talk together regularly, and so I think they're working very well together. With that said, we are different. We are a certifying body. They are a membership group. Uh, they are trying to drive awareness um, um, for members and, uh, and, for, and to members and for more members, and that's wonderful. We're trying to drive awareness on the public as to what the CFP certification really means so that the public will ultimately know it, recognize it, and demand it. So I think that we are uh, very complementary and very close uh, and at the same time still different. Uh, another question, will the, will the national advertising be seen in my market? Will it direct viewers to access the CFP site to find a CFP planner? As I mentioned earlier, I think uh, our, the media that we will be looking at will be national media, so they would be available all over the country. And uh, certainly a portion of that will be driving people to the press line so they can find a CFP professional. Great. Okay. Let me just uh, kind of look. We we're kind of coming to the end here. Let me go to the... Uh, Tom, just a question here. Somebody said uh, 200 seems like a small sample unless it was representative for our in-depth phone interviews. That's a research question. It was actually a little bit over 200, but we, were, we took a lot of care um, to make sure this was statistically significant. And in working with Westat, a major research company, uh, we were actually working at the 95% confidence level uh, at that. We wanted to make sure we reached the initial people that we tried to for the survey. That also increased the level. So we made up to seven phone calls to those same people to make sure we could reach them, uh, which also drove the confidence level of the study. Okay, there is a question here that relates to uh, will we promote any one business model over the other? Uh, Tom, do you want to take that? I think it, um, it's very important that we don't do that, and uh, we will not be uh, trying to differentiate any um, business model. Uh, no, and I think, and I think the feedback on that, we, you know, as as uh, certificates know, we are business model neutral, compensation neutral, uh, and that's that's part of our fabric. And so, any advertising campaign is really intended to raise public awareness of the CFP credential, and and not to say, gee, you should go to somebody who does it this way versus this way. Uh, somebody asks, where did the $12 come from? Uh, how did we come up with that number? Sure, in the, the telephone survey, survey that we mentioned earlier, um, there were two methodologies used uh, to come at a dollar figure that students would feel um, best represented what they would contribute for this type of campaign. Um, there were a number of questions involved in each methodology. Uh, some of them uh, were related to what would you consider too expensive, what would you consider too cheap, and that you did, wouldn't think it would be effective. And all of those um, data points together were used to come up with the $12 figure. At $12, the majority of certificates um, are willing to contribute and feel like this is a good idea. Uh, the next question, uh, will certificates be able to uh, customize uh, spots or will they be able to, you know, to, to do that, uh, Tom? I think certainly in the uh, toolkit that we'll make available on the website, we'll have a number of tools. Um, we'll look at a, a number of different media types that you could um, use and revise on your own. Um, I'm not sure that there is a great demand, but I would be interested to know if there is for um, certificates who are advertising and broadcast, but we will definitely have print and online materials, perhaps more. Um, and we will also have, as Kevin mentioned, the media schedule there, so you'll know where we are advertising. So if there are local opportunities to 
have advertising that is adjacent or be in the same uh, either websites or publications, um, that could be a strategy that you could use and you could find that from the toolkit as well. Bob, I have a question that somebody is asking, you know, uh, why didn't you bring the full presentation to everybody and you know, why are we, you know, we're sharing information. Could you comment on that? Uh, you broke up a little bit on me. Why aren't we sharing? There was a question just about it seems premature to be talking to certificates and, uh, uh, you know, just from the standpoint of this is being an opportunity to gather information. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I fully understand the question, to be honest with you. I think, you know, from, from our standpoint, it's important. This is a major initiative if we undertake it. And it, it's very important that the certificates, one, understand what we're, what we're proposing, what we're talking about, and also feel that it makes sense for what, what, what they value out of the CFP certification. So, um, you know, to, to the board, it's really a function of, um, of uh, educating and informing the certificates, and at the same time, um, getting their temperature on does this make sense? And one of the questions that, that I ask at every certificate connection is, does this make sense? And uh, the vast majority of people are saying, Yes, it does. I mean, there, there are uh, some good suggestions, some good comments, and uh, what seems to be a pretty widespread sense of support, which, which to some extent validates what we've heard in the surveys. So, uh, you know, from our standpoint, and I said this before, I don't think we can communicate too much. Indeed. A person asks, uh, uh, what percentage of all practicing financial advisors are actually CFPs? The number of people uh, that we have universally, and, and because people use a variety of different terms, financial planner, uh, financial advisor, uh, there are 62,000 CFP professionals. And the number that, uh, that we look at that, that actually say they do financial planning or some related number is, and, and, and we've not been able to tie it down any more than to 150,000, some say uh, up to 300,000. When you look at the people who call themselves financial advisors, it's more like 500,000. Um, yeah, I think it was. I think Kevin, it was yeah, Cerulli who says puts the number at around three hundred thousand, and the Department of Labor puts it at about one hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy thousand. But it it does vary. I think we have time for one final uh, question, and then a, a, a comment, Bob. Me, or let, I'll let you wrap this up. And this question is for Tom. Has there been any thought given to redesigning the website to align with a national campaign? Yeah, that's definitely in the consideration set. Obviously, that is a very big task, and it will likely follow um, after our campaign has already started, but there will definitely be splash pages, web pages that will be designed for folks um, who see the advertising and are driven right into our website. But I think an entire um, website redesign is definitely would be on the books if we were to move and, forward. And we should say that we do, we do own CFP.com, CFP.net, CFP.org, and so it's quite possible that we might consider using it, one of those um, for the public. Good. Well, Bob, I'll let you wrap this up for the afternoon. Thank you. Well, first, let me thank everybody for tuning in. I know we had uh, several hundred people on the call, so I, I want to thank you. I think that uh, um, what, we, what we'd welcome from, from all of you is more feedback. Um, additional thoughts, additional comments or questions, feel free to email uh, me, email the board directly. Um, we we want to take all of this into um, account as we uh, discuss this in November. So uh, we've, we have tried, we think, pretty hard to get out in front of all of, all of the certificates, uh, at least those that wanted to hear from us. And if you have feedback, we do want to hear from you. So thank you for giving us the time and for all of your support for uh, CFP Board. Also think about volunteering. Uh, that's where the leaders come from and that's why we, we have a very passionate group of certificates and uh, a passionate group of volunteers. It's very rewarding, so I encourage you to do that. So uh, please volunteer and give us your feedback.